I sat down exclusively with CEO and Chair Kathy Warden to discuss the portfolio. But since it is September 11th and we mark 22 years since those terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, we first discussed how the world and the notion of security and deterrence have changed. Well, I'm glad that you raised it because it is a day that we don't want to forget. It is an important reminder of why we do the work we do in support of global security. And we need to remember the tragedy of lives lost. But as I think about the motivation that it brings to the work that we do, our people very much have a passion for mission. And it's events like 9-11 that remind us that that passion is well-placed, that we want people to feel safe in their homelands, and that in this important time that we live in, we all have a role to play in making that happen. Yeah, never forget. How do you think about the geopolitical landscape right now, and what does that mean in terms of the way you're making investments and the types of technologies and capabilities you're looking to bring to the government? It's definitely a complex environment that we're operating in. You noted the investments that China is making in their military buildup and also technology advancements. So in one dimension, we need to keep pace and stay at the forefront of technology advancement. On the other hand, there are adversaries that have lesser capability that also are aggressors, and we need to make sure that we are able to have the capability ability and capacity to address those threats as well. So let's talk a little bit about the role that space plays in all of that, because it is a warfighting domain. We're seeing a lot of growth, Northrop Grumman specifically, double-digit sales growth, it would seem, every quarter. Um, huge growing business for you. Well, space is a very exciting environment for us to operate in. It's a challenging environment. There's no doubt that our team, the people, their expertise, and the product lines that we have make it look easy from time to time, but it really is rocket science. And so so right now we are focused on being at the forefront of technology and that has led us to grow the portfolio very rapidly. And what we see today is a broad variety of applications for our products. National security is our core and it will remain our core. There are applications though in civil and commercial and we look to leverage that technology base quite broadly. You're very heavily involved and you have multiple contracts for multiple legs of uh, the nuclear triad and modernization of that, including Sentinel which is the ICBM, the intercontin intercontinental ballistic missiles that will replace the Minuteman missiles. To the, I realize it's classified. To the extent you can share an update on that development. Well, Sentinel is an important program for the reasons you note. It is a core of our strategic deterrence as a nation, and we are modernizing it, which includes everything from a new missile to a new command and launch capability. And as a result, we are in the early phases of developing these pieces, which will ultimately come together and reach initial operating capability toward the end of the decade. It is progressing well, but there's no doubt that supply chain disruption and some of the other challenges that all industrials have faced over the last 12 to 18 months are impacting timelines on the program. So we're working hard with the Air Force in partnership to make sure that we can deliver this important capability for our nation. National security is about 85 percent of Northrop Grumman's portfolio, but it also builds commercial satellites, for example, for communications. I saw some of those on the production line today. Has a growing space logistics business to service spacecraft in orbit. It also works with NASA on everything from the James Webb Space Telescope to the commercial cargo program with its Cygnus capsule, with one currently attached to the International Space Station. That capability is one that will be highly relevant in decades to come as we look at manned space travel and what it takes to create habitats for humans uh, who will dwell in space. So it is just the dawn of a new era with what we're doing in civil space. I mean, that's the perfect lead-in for my next question, which is HALO, the habitat and uh, logistical out outpost. It and I realize you're in a quiet period, but last earnings season, it, it certainly got a lot of attention from investors um, because it impacted space systems margins. Yeah. Well, Halo is complex in that it is a habitat, but it is tied to the gateway, which is the architecture that NASA is building for taking humans into space and then deploying them to the moon. So as the gateway architecture evolves, so must Halo. And what we're seeing is that that evolution is still very much in process. So we're working with NASA to make sure that as those changes permeate to Halo's design, we are working in a way that's smart, that gets us jointly the capability for both the gateway and the habitat matured quickly, but in tandem.